Star Wars Visions was always a fascinating project that I wholeheartedly welcomed when first hearing about the idea of Star Wars in anime form. And while Season 1 delivered on this, I still had mixed feelings for most of the episodes offered there. So with Season 2 now pulling away from the anime focus and instead diversifying itself in different international art styles, and based on the initial trailer, I can't say I was thrilled with this direction. But fortunately, for the most part, I can now admit that I stand corrected and enjoyed Season 2 a lot more than I thought I would. Even actually liking those episodes that I at first wrote off because of its art style, and yes, I'm just as surprised. So like before, here's a quick review for every episode in order and my opinions on them. Episode 1, Sith So this one is interesting, as I initially was looking forward to it a lot based purely on its sweet looking 3D art style. And, well, to be honest, I was ultimately left disappointed by it. As for most of the episode, I was left confused on what's going on, who this woman is, and where exactly is she? Some strange parallel world? Living in a fantasy through her mind? Uh, who knows? Things do get a bit clearer once the Sith Master arrives, but even then I found myself questioning the story as it seems like the Sith Master is suicidal and actually wants to die. Which is the exact opposite thing a Sith would want to do, they kinda want to prolong their life as long as possible. Sure, I got the whole idea that the female lead is a former Sith and wants out of that life, but we barely know anything about her and I had a hard time connecting with her motives. Why did she leave? Why did she even become a Sith then? The story to me just seems somewhat flat, and I think that Ronin from Season 1 did a better job with this idea of a Sith fighting back against other Sith. So while I liked the animation here, the story… it wasn't terrible nor amazing, just okay at best. Maybe it's more so on me for having just too high expectations for this and it came nowhere near in delivering them. Hence why my disappointment in it. So a 5 out of 10 for me. Episode 2 Screechers Reach at first I found myself confused as to how this episode is connected or even anything to do with Star Wars, and how it opened only added to that confusion, which is about a child laborer who randomly out of nowhere decides to leave work early with her friends in order to see a ghost? Yeah, talk about random. Suffice to say, this started out kinda dumb and I was worried that I would dislike this one even more. Fortunately, the exact opposite happened. The story began to actually make sense slowly but surely. The characters were becoming likable and everything clicked once the Star Wars element showed itself with the Sith Lady pretending to be the said ghost. I have to say I really like the story here behind a Sith Master choosing her new apprentice and the way she goes about it, along with the emotion that came from the end. A slow and strange start, but a great episode overall, 7 out of 10. Episode 3 in the Stars Another great episode with not only a visually appealing 3D art style, but the story is also so good too. The idea of seeing how the last remnants of an alien race continue to try and survive after the Empire plunders their planet's resources is such an engrossing concept, especially when those aliens are Force-sensitive too. You also really start to feel for the characters and their struggles, so the ending with the two girls avenging their mother and doing what she and all her people fail to do really hits home. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I especially liked that they didn't turn these girls into Jedi too because that would have been just too overplayed. Overall, aside from a few nitpicks, it's a solid episode with not too many flaws here. 8 out of 10. Episode 4, I Am Your Mother 
So I gotta say, I thought I would hate this one based purely on the kitty art style and while I wasn't crazy about it, the story did end up winning me over. It's nothing too serious, but it is a heartwarming little tale and the stop motion is really well done. Notably during the racing sequence, which of course is the main highlight of the episode. Yeah, there's not much to say here, it's a fun little story with a good message behind it. Eh, what's not to like? 7 out of 10. Episode 5, Journey to the Dark Head. Since the first teaser of Visions Volume 2 came out, this episode was my most anticipated because of its anime-like art style. And while I was also looking forward almost as much to Sif as well, that unexpectedly ended up disappointing me. But this on the other hand, wow, it did the opposite and lived up to my expectations for it. The animation is awesome, the story is amazing with a conflicted Jedi who's constantly haunted by a Sith that killed everyone they knew, and a monk who believes that she can turn the tide in the Jedi-Sith war by destroying a stone head that controls the dark side. The characters are fun and interesting, both making a great team and the short journey that we go along with them is rather enjoyable too. Not to mention the fight sequences were just thrilling and captivating, it really makes me want to see more lightsaber battles in anime form. The twist at the end here is also quite decent, but I think it could have been just a tad better, that's probably my one and only gripe here. But other than that, I definitely love this one and I can't say enough good things about it. I would honestly without a doubt watch an anthology-like series featuring a new adventure with Ara and Towel in this world. 9 out of 10 Episode 6, The Spy Dancer This one was a bit of a mixed bag for me. I'm not sure whether I liked or disliked the animation style, as at times it was okay, while at others it did bother me. As for its story, I didn't really care for it too much, but I did however really like the twist with the Imperial turning out to be the dancer's kidnapped son. Although it's kind of unbelievable for me that the Empire would kidnap a random alien kid just to raise them to become one of their own. Which, yeah, you could say that because this isn't canon, then maybe the Empire of this universe isn't as xenophobic, but even so, I feel that's such an important element that's so part of the Empire's identity which shouldn't really be changed no matter what the universe. Not to mention there's no way that dancer would have survived in the club surrounded by hundreds of stormtroopers either, I mean come on. And the fact that they all randomly stopped shooting too at one point for no inexplicable reason also bothered me. Again, not a terrible short, but also nothing to write home about either for me. 5 out of 10 Episode 7, The Bandits of Golok So, let me start first by saying that I really adored the 3D animation in this episode. It was both colorful, cartoony, yet also still presented some realism. Especially the Stormtrooper 3D models here, they were just mmm gorgeous. Probably the best I've seen in any Star Wars animated media in a long time. And that says a lot as there's even Star Wars games that struggle to make good looking Stormtrooper armor. So that aspect and the whole look of the episode I loved. But everything else here? Eh, not so much. I mean, I could care less about the characters, they were simply boring, and the same goes for the story too. As it's basically a kid with his force-sensitive sister traveling through space India looking for a place to take refuge. Sure, they happen to stumble across an Inquisitor and a Jedi, and yeah, while the fight here was the best thing about the episode, it didn't exactly last long and the ending was just meh in my opinion, it's not really a happy ending for either sibling, nor for you as the viewer either. 
Also, someone please explain to me how those purge troopers disappeared and were nowhere to be seen in the final fight. <laughs> that was, it was like the writers just forgot about them, I guess. Eh, I'll give this one a 4 out of 10. Episode 8, The Pit. Surprisingly, this was the only episode in Volume 2 that was done by a Japanese studio. And what can I say, I thought the animation here was pretty good. I especially like the Stormtrooper commander with the cape. I mean, Phasma made it work so well, so why can't a normal Imperial Stormtrooper too, eh? The story in this episode is also interesting and pretty dark as it deals with a bunch of slaves that are abandoned in a pit by the Empire after extinguishing the kyber crystals there. And on one hand, I was a bit surprised as I figured the Empire would have maybe exterminated them, which if you think about it would have probably been the smarter move for them to do here or at least move them to another location on the planet and mine for more kyber crystals. But yeah, completely abandoning them is pretty vile too, although it does backfire on them later. Luckily, this story does end with a happy ending, but it did leave me with some questions, such as why were all the slaves all humans and no aliens at all? How did the civilians go through this entire time without realizing that there is this giant pit literally outside the city? Especially when it's a bland, empty desert out there, you're telling me no one from the city at any point decided to stop by and visit the pit to check it out? Also, how were the slaves able to survive for so long without any food or water? Why did the stormtroopers fold when pressed against the civilians? Just a single shot would have scared them off, and besides, when is the Empire known for cowering to some random civilians? And there's no way that the people in the busy, loud city would have heard all those slaves too. It, that part was unbelievable. So yeah, the story did have a lot of flaws in it, but I think this was fine for what it was. 7 out of 10. Episode 9, Aou's Song. For the very last episode of Volume 2, I really expected them to learn from their mistakes and leave us with a banger. You know, saving us the best for last. But nope. They once again left the worst for last, just like in Volume 1, which is the last thing you want to do to end a series with disappointment. Now sure, the animation here is cute, it's colorful, and I did think that the backdrop art was rather breathtaking, it, it was really good. But I felt it perhaps went too far in terms of looking kitty as for a majority of the episode just by looking at it you'd never really think you were watching something to do with star wars not to mention the story itself was a snooze fest too as i found myself getting bored halfway through and paying more attention to my phone than what was going on the screen which, well, uh, yeah, is not a good sign for this episode when both the story and the animation style are not good. I also couldn't buy the idea that the Sith came and corrupted literally every single kyber crystal on this happy-go-lucky planet either. Not only would that be physically impossible to do, and pointless, but also not to mention a Sith bleeding a kyber crystal is also a timely process and not incredibly easy to do for all. I mean, Vader even failed at one point, so I'm not really sure what else to say about this one. I mean, again, it looked pretty, but it was also pretty boring too, and I thought it was the worst episode of all of Volume 2. 3 out of 10 for me. Overall, I liked a lot that Volume 2 of Visions had to offer, and I'm glad to see Lucasfilm having expanded outside of strictly anime for this in terms of animation style, as it did work out pretty well in the end for the most part, despite my initial hesitation on such a move. Yeah, I did enjoy and like majority of the episodes. Sure, there were a few stinkers here and there, but it wasn't too bad. 
Still, I think Star Wars in anime form is the most superior, and seeing as both my absolute favorites from Volume 1 and 2 were of similar anime art style, then I can't see myself wanting anything else but more of that in the future. 